Brexit. Well, it plays havoc with people's memory. Now, there are those of us who could have sworn that most uh, leavers promised the country that a deal to exit the European Union could be the easiest uh, deal in history. Oh, wasn't that David David? It would be the most amicable separation. Well, the EU would be so pleased to see us go. And the Brexiters would be so, so pleased to see the back of the European Union. Now we Brits, well, we'd get our cake and eat it. We'd get everything of which we have always dreamed of. Or maybe not. As it turns uh, out that nobody ever said anything like that at all. Well, that's what they tell us. No. It was a figment of our imagination. Yeah. <laughs> no figure. Even so, this Monday was meant to be the day, the day when the final pieces of that jigsaw got put into place. Of the Northern Ireland, uh, well, protocol. Well, Richie Sunak had a cunning plan. Yes, Baldrick. There could be a green lane for goods coming from Great Britain, whose final destination was Northern Ireland. A red lane for goods bound for the Republic and a fudged arbitrate. Any disputes for which there will be many. A panel made up of uh, UK and EU officials that we could pretend had nothing to do with EU law, even though it was obviously that it did. And uh, what else did people expect, quite frankly? The EU wasn't about to become British any time soon. Anyway, before we continue, please boot the old like button, and there will be a secret word at the end of this video. Oh, if you want sports, you on Patreon, or buy us coffee, and the link's down below in the description. Well, it was all... Also, um, how to put it, ridiculously simple. No one had thought of it before. Hmm. What's more, he had phoned Ursula von der Leyen and the EU Brexit negotiator Maris Seshkovich, and they had, well, also given it their thumbs up. They too had got fed up with, uh, well, the endless negotiations that went nowhere and were ready to cut a deal. At the very least, they told themselves the UK now seemed to be, well, taking some kind of responsibility for sorting out the mess into which it got itself into. Oh, brief glimmer of synaptic contact in Westminster, maybe, or maybe not. The mere hint that a deal was in the offing was enough to send all the Brexiters into a meltdown. Even those who had never, well, been demanding that the UK leave the single market. Yeah, <laughs> go figure. And the customs union come to that in the first place. The whole point of their existence was just to say no to every goddamn thing. Even if they, uh, well, were presented with a deal that offered them everything that they always wanted. They would still find a way to say no. Yeah. <laughs> to do it otherwise, well, would be to show weakness. Besides, it was all probably a plot to lure them in a trap. The first rule of the DUP is that if uh, the EU is willing to agree to something, then it must be a trap. Oh, well, Alexander Boris de Feffel Johnson had been the first out of the blocks at the weekend with some kind of well, well placed leaks in them well to the media. Well that's probably Alexander Boris to Beville Johnson in the first place. He hadn't been a happy bunny, has he? No. Not surprised. Watching him go jogging today with his uh, so called trainer or is it his bodyguard? If I looked like that, I wouldn't be happy either, no. Then any deal that made Sunak look vaguely competent, but it had been trashed. So he had taken time off from the search for his uh, nine bedroom. Yeah, well, he's still dreaming, quite frankly, yeah. Yeah, in, well, 
Uh, uh, maybe the hope is so he can get all his children to stay at once forever. Maybe. Yeah, the forever home. For all these oh, 200 kids. Well, nine bedrooms, so we two. No, anyways, it's a big house. Four million pound house. Well, he still hadn't worked out, though, how he's going to pay for it. Certainly not him, of course. That'd be Lord Brando or the guy from JCB. <laughs> well, he didn't take that £250,000. Johnny's speech to fork out for his own accommodation, did he? No. Something would turn up, wouldn't it, for little old Alexander Boris de Feffel Johnson and his fluffy hair. Well, Johnson's intervention had been short and sweet. Penny Mordaunt said, it was Boris just being Boris. <laughs> well, any deal that Sunak had made had to be dodgy, even though he had been a lever from the start. Though it was, well, a natural born sellout. He wasn't to be trusted. No, he's like a turncoat. You can't trust him. No, he's sly, slimy. There was no such thing as a fair compromise when it came to Brexit. Only unfair compromises would do. So what was needed was to make his, well, sure, his bill to, well, disapply any part of the Northern Ireland Protocol that he and the idiotic Frosty, the snowman, had negotiated was passed, even though it was, well, stuck in the House of Lords with no hope of it ever being voted through. It had to be, well, passed. Was, was his, hmm? And Boris must get what Boris wants. It was a, a necessary backstop. We couldn't have the EU thinking that we had ever intended to, well, keep our word, no. Michel Barnier's, well, he said he lost all trust. Well, the protocol had only been a bit of a nonsense to get Brexit through Parliament and help along that oven-ready deal. No one had ever meant it to be taken seriously, no. Alexander Boris to Bethel Johnson's remarks are not totally unhelpful. <laughs> That's what uh, Penny Mordaunt had said. But Johnson had been rather taken aback by that. Oh, really? He had certainly intended them to be, well, totally unhelpful. <laughs> Why give Rich an even break? Considering that he, well, he pulled a rug from underneath Boris. It would never have occurred to him to do something from which Sunak, well, could possibly benefit. Turn the screws, the thumb screws, you could say. Bricks had destroyed. Greater men and women. And soon, that most definitely. Now let him take the consequences. He's got his head on the block. Others have been, well, almost as unhelpful. Deliberately obstructive. That will do nicely. Take Simon Clark, for instance, and that ex-moronic Bernard Jenkin. Well... I had suggested the protocol bill to be held in reserve. Just so it could be, well, to terrify the EU. Because the threat of the UK passing a law that um, enabled it to break international law was keeping the EU awake at night or not. Well, then he went still further. The UK should forget about the border in the Irish Sea. And reinstate one between Belfast and Dublin. I shouldn't laugh because that is so... That's a really, really bad idea. Hey, why not just rip up the Good Friday Agreement? Hmm? You might as well, if that's the case. Or maybe the EU just wouldn't bother to check. If factories in, nor in the north were manufacturing goods to EU standards... Well, the pigs are flying. That they are. Now, Rich acknowledged defeat. Of course he could get his deal through Parliament. But only with Labour votes. Hmm. Politically, very damaging. 
sure it would be the right thing to do, though. Right for the country. But since, well, when he was, the oh, well, he, well, he's not interested in doing what was best for the country. I, I, I can't remember. No. It's never. Party first, always. It's either that or party gate. They all got fines, after all. Always, yeah. Party comes first. So there was nothing for it. He sent James cleverly back to Seshkovich with instructions to agree to nothing for the time being. We'd waited seven years for a deal on Northern Ireland. Oh, I thought we had one. Hmm. What is, I don't know, a wee bit longer? What do you reckon? Leave it in the comments down below. Oh, when will it end? me. Well, thinking of bad deals, let's think of bad, well, narcotics deals. I'm going to think of Breaking Bad. So to, <laughs> to, to the word of day, which is a movie, but also it's a series, is Breaking Bad. Because, well, Northern Ireland Protocol, which was, that's quite frankly, was a perfectly good deal, has gone bad. With, uh, well, Richie Sunak, Alexander Boris the Fethel Johnson at the wheel. Oh, yeah, that was that other person in the ship, like the ship passing in the night. What was her name? Something like lettuce or something. What was her name again? Oh, I wonder. Oh, Liz Truss. Yeah, she's the one who presides over the hospital with 1,500 acro props. I think Britain's broken. What do you reckon? Leave it in the comments down below. And don't forget, the secret word of the day is Breaking Bad. And we are planting 1,000 trees on 2 hectares of land here in France. If you'll be part of that, there's a GoFundMe link down below in the description for which you can uh, make a contribution and we'll plant a tree on your behalf. And we'll put your name with it on a wooden sign for which I'll make with a router or biography. Oh, and I'm also making bat boxes, bird boxes. We're doing a rewilding for the benefit of the animals. If you'll be part of that, there's a link down below. But don't forget! The secret word of the day is, well, it's two words, I suppose. It's Breaking Bad. Oh, that was a really good film, that was. Yeah. Or TV show. Yeah. Anyway, time to go.